good quality. <laughs> What's funny? Oh, a story in here about a Glasgow woman. Listen. In a fit of revenge, she cut off her husband Sandy Mellish's private part and chucked it in a skip. <laughs> Lush. You go, girlfriend, go. That's funny. Of course it is. It's extreme, but hey. <sighs> I've got your logic extreme. <laughs> oh, here's another one. You'll love this. Oh, what is it? A woman with a 42-inch chest lost one of her nipples in an accident at work with a bacon slicer. <laughs> oh, that's in very poor taste, that. Well, I'm to extreme, but hey, I mean, what is the difference here? There's a world of difference. The wife was provoked by her husband's behaviour. The other was an unfortunate accident. I see. So what you're actually saying is in the great gender card game of life, a pair of tits beats a single cock high. I don't like the tone of this conversation. That's your trouble, lady, isn't it? Penis envy. Oh, is that a fact? Well, I certainly don't envy yours. I've seen hanging moles that are more impressive than that thing. <laughs> Oh, is that the time? I need to start getting ready for Peach's birthday party. Since when did it become your job to throw the Wayne's birthday party? Since her mother went up the remedial wing to visit Gash. It perks her up to see the man that chucked her more clinically depressed than she is. That's just par for the course nowadays, isn't it? Why is everything men's fault? Hello? Jimsy. <laughs> I've done a terrible thing. That's my own fault. What do you mean? What's happened? <laughs> I'll just say it. <laughs> I humped a midget. Oh, <laughs> you You humped a knot in a tree once. You didn't ring me about that. I know, but I'm afraid there's been a development. <sighs> right, I'll be right there. Oh, honey drawers. What is it, crispy wise? <laughs> Would you mind if I were to pop out for a moment? Not at all. You do whatever the hell you want, but you make sure you are back in time for Peachy's birthday party, right? Aye, aye. <laughs> okay. Are you sure you want this kid? I'm sure. I try to buy her half wrap. I said, look, Here's £4.50 up front, and there's a fiver waiting on a scratch card for you after the termination. It's not a question of money, I've told you before. Listen, I am not wishing to be indelicate here, but are you sure it's his? I've had a scan done. The Wayne's got two horns and a tail and was reading a copy of Asian Babes. It's his, all right. I wasn't going to say anything. I was going to bring the kid up myself, and then I thought, I don't want my child hating me because he doesn't know who his father is. Eh, uh, when you say he... Like I said, I've had a scan done. We've even picked a name. Henry. Henry? <laughs> Him for a fair, Henry for a name. He's sure he needs his red hair and he'll have the full bob eye hat trick. <laughs> oh, my God, you hear that. I mean, I'm not ready for the responsibilities of fatherhood. I'm still sowing my wild oats. I'm 62. What? <laughs> it's a compliment. I, ch I cherished you enough to lie to you. There is, of course, uh, one other consideration. I know he's married. That's why we're here. That's why we phoned you, Rab. I don't know what you do about Ella. You two talk it over. You will support me, won't you, Jamesy? How can you even ask that? This is our child. Hmm? <laughs> hey, hit me. Who do you know that'll put in a really bin for a tenner? You can't. Hey, oh, for God's sake, this is your son. You don't understand, Rab. No having wings was Ella's. Greatest tragedy. Oh, I know that, James, I know that. I mean, news like this could be a devastating blow. There's no telling how she'll react. Oh, you're bloody right. You'll... You'll have to be delicate here. You'll have to... You'll have to break it there gently. Uh, oh. Well, oh. I'll, I'll just say... Ella. Hmm? 
Yeah, no offence. But I'm the egg man, so get it right up you. <laughs> I'd maybe skip the fingers if I was you. Hey, well, all the best. Hey, don't go up. I can't do a thing like this cold, can I? I mean, at least stay and have a drink with me first. I can't, eh, James? I'm due at Peach's birthday party. Oh, I see. Oh. Plenty of time for your grand wing, but none for your godson. Godson? That's right. Godfather. <laughs> well, maybe just the one. <laughs> You really like dancing, don't you, Nana? Oh, what? I've had plenty of practice, pet, up the Lindella in the 60s. Other lassies danced in the handbags. I danced with your grand as they lay pissed on the floor. When's he coming back, Nana? I'm running out of pish music and we need to cut the cake. Oh, don't you worry, pet. I'll wipe the flair with that useless sack of shite when I get my hands on him. It's my birthday. Oh, in a happy, joyous way. Oh! Oh, come on, let's do them shape. Take it, it off the arm. <laughs> Party off. Go on. It's true, Ella. I have been seeing a vivacious young dwarf. It started out as a one off, but. I quickly grew enchanted by the novelty of having a mini-pump lover, and now, alas, she is with child. I see. And hopefully a normal, healthy child, but... Well, even if it turns out to be something that's sitting in a high chair with a full beard and chewing tobacco, <laughs> that won't bother me. Because a wane's a wane, am I right? You're right, Jamesy. A wane's a wane. Ironic, isn't it? We tried for 30 years to have a wee. What's her name? Sneezy. He's <laughs> <laughs> made that up. It, it, it's Irene. And she's not a real dwarf. She's merely a scale model of a human being kind of thing. No. Forgive me, but I'm puzzled. What exactly would any young, self-respecting wee lassie see in the likes of you? Tragically. Irene suffers from a terrible illness. She has what doctors call a bike. <laughs> that would explain it. Maybe medical science will come up with a cure one day. But in the meantime, this is my solution. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Well, I'm, I'm sorry I was late for your party, sweetheart, but... Well... I took my feet out for a walk, you see, and then I made the mistake of letting them off the leash, and they darted into a pub, so I had to run in after them. I'll tell you, that is the last time I will buy hush puppies. <laughs> back to you, back to you. You promised me faithfully that you would be back in time. Oh, come on, Mary, sweetheart. Angel drawers, no more like that. Come on. I'll, I'll put on a wee bit of the, the Molly Citrus or the Tink Tonks or whatever the hell the winds are listening to you do, and we'll have a wee dance. Oh, fuck it off! I don't want any wee dance. We've got relationship issues, and the only way we are going to resolve them is. Hold on. Ella, look, I can't talk the now. Oh, really? He cut off James's what? Really? Oh, Rob, would you stop being so selfish? Oh. Ella, if you. Oh, Rob, what have I done? Oh, I was just about to cut the cake. Oh. No, 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 don't, don't, don't scare the wings. Don't scare the wings. Distract them, distract them. Oh. Oh, I just... Grandpa, what's that sticking out your chest? Uh, oh, wait, this is just a wee game that your granny and I sometimes play. It's called... <laughs> Breed Knife Hoopla. Grandpa, Breed Knife Hoopla, Mary. Oh, Oh, aye. Hours of fun for all the family. Watch this. <laughs> oh. 
Rob, my life is over. Oh, stop it for God's sake. Oh, some men get by with their wally. <laughs> Name one. I'll rephrase that. Married men get by without a wally. Well, I'm married, and I still need it. Oh, garbage. After the first five years, what married couple can be bothered having sex? Well, know each other, obviously. <laughs> That's repulsive. But there's randoms out there, empty, shabby, demeaning affairs. I mean, they're what made my life worth living. Oh. Ella was under stress. You got another bird pregnant. Anyway, what about me? What about me, eh? Two inches lower. This could have been my heart, boy. That flesh wound. Another couple of feet lower and it could have been you. All right, all right, I'm getting a picture. <coughs> Bob, you know how much I love my thing, mate. <laughs> I mean, how their kids growing up, well, I mean, they had their budgies and their goldfish. Oh, me. I had cocky. <laughs> I love them. I take a bit. Play well. Stroke them. Nuzzle them. Oh, stop them, for God's sake. You're giving me the bulk. <laughs> I want them back. You go ahead and help me. Ah, uh, yes, yeah, Mr. Cotter. Mr. Nesbitt. <laughs> How are you both doing? Well, for, uh, for a man whose wife has just scored double tops in his chest plate, no bad. But my colleague here is feeling an unaccustomed draft in the old crutch vicinity. Yes, yes. Uh, great pity that we couldn't locate the missing uh, part, you know. I mean, if we'd found it in good time and, uh, you know, kept in the right conditions, then, uh, you know, a regraft would have been possible. Sadly. <laughs> this sounds daft, Doctor. But I know Cocky's still out there, somewhere, calling to me. Maybe trapped, maybe in pain. Oh, catch a grip of yourself. It's your walloper you're talking about, No Skippy the Bush Kangaroo. Unfortunately, and Mrs Cotter wasn't much help. She's at the police station now, but they say she's, you know, she's traumatised. She has very little recollection of, of what happened. Doctor. Tell me I'll pump again. <laughs> well, with the missing tissue, you know, a, a full recovery would have been possible. Without it. Well. Uh, Rab, there's still a chance. Oh, I have got so this. But, well, you heard what the man said, dear James. You know, with, with every passing minute. You've got to help me, Rab. Do you remember that film? Bring me the head of Alfredo Garcia. Hey. Well, bring me the walloper of James E. Cotter. <laughs> <laughs> well, if Bilbo Baggins can go in search of a ring, I could maybe play Hunt the Helmet, eh? <laughs> I wish I could help you, but my mind's a blank. Oh, think back, Ella, for goodness. When did you last see it? Oh, about 1992. <laughs> Even then, I had my eyes shut and I was thinking of Chuck Norris. You don't remember anything at all. I mind him telling me that he'd made this lassie pregnant. I was about to make a pan of soup. And I lunged at him. Next thing I know, I'm running down the street with a Tupperware box in my hand. The rest's a total blackout. Take your time, Mrs Cotter. Where did you put it in that Tupperware box, Where Were you going to cook it for your tea? I don't know. Do you think I might have been looking for ice? Ice? That'll be it, to preserve it. Now, where would you have gone? The local fishmonger, the butcher? Fresh food in Govan. You kidding? <laughs> no, no. There's only one place. You leave it with me. Oh, Rob. Oh, it's you. Looking for another game of husband darts, eh? <laughs> you want to get around the clock in my ribcage this time? Look, it was an accident. I'm really sorry. Aye, aye. I'll speak to you later. Where are you going? I am away out to look for cock. 
I never thought I'd ever hear myself saying that. <laughs> You're right, Rob. Ella came tearing in here earlier. She was in a hell of a state. She had this Tupperware box and she asked me to put it in the icebox for her, so that's what I did. Oh, thank God. How? What's the big deal? Did, did she not tell you what was in it? Nope. If only you knew how often he dreamed of you holding that thing in your head. <laughs> I'll tell you this. I've had some queer things in my play piece in my time, but never one of these. <laughs> I mean, you have to say, it looks harmless enough, doesn't it? But see, if you're a man, it never gives you any peace. A penis, well, it's kind of like a supermodel, insanely insecure and demanding constant attention. I right, suppose, well, nature made us that way because of the competition for females, no? No, a penis is actually a man's most prized possession, and he jealously guards it with every fibre of his being. Oh, my God! Oh, my God! Oh. This calls for drastic action. You all right there? You're going to wear that watch out the amount of time you spend looking at it. Oh, nice, mate. If you'll excuse me, I've just suffered a tragic loss and I'm hoping it can be repaired. Yes, me too. Sandy Mellish is my name. You probably read about me in the local paper. Oh, you're a guy that handies. Exactly. I heard about your misfortune. Thought I'd pop along to cheer you up. What about those nurses, eh? All those buns and not a sausage between us. <laughs> Just unlucky. <laughs> Marvellous, eh? My mate's out there right now. He's trying to hunt mine down. A race against the cock, right? <laughs> <laughs> yes, I know. That's the sort of joke that pissed off the surgeon. See if he finds it. Do you think they can fix it? Oh, yes. What they've done with me is to stitch mine onto my body to keep the circulation going while they prepare for the operation. Aye, I've heard about that. Where'd they put it on your leg? Unfortunately, no. Like I said, never piss off a surgeon. <laughs> Bad bastards. Right, you beaky bastards. Who's got a Willie? Come on! Is it you? Is it you? Dear God, you're supposed to be vegetarians, you! You dozy big Egypt's in his arse! Bet you've never seen this on the living planet, eh? Big David Attenborough slugging the wildlife with a beer bowl. <laughs> right, Hitchcock. You're claimed. Oh, you did it, lad, you did it. I prayed to big Jehovah for this. I said, Lord, Put an end to plague and famine, and then take a swatch on the elder part and see if you can find my Hampton Wick. Aye, well, just calm down a wee bit, Jimsy. They've got to make sure it's the right goal yet, you know. Oh, I hope so, Rob. What I hope so. Mr Cotter, good news. We have your missing uh, member. <gasps> yes. It was lodged in the, in the, in the gullet of the bird. Dear <laughs> Rob, a blow job off a seagull. <laughs> Another first for Jamesy <laughs> uh, we, We'd better get into theatre. Yeah, uh, 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 if, if I don't come through this, you tell me Henry about his old money. Oh, I'll tell him, I'll tell him. You, you tell him his daddy was rampant around prank. You, you tell him he was conceived in a public toilet. Well, I peeked through a, a glory hole at two geese having an oven ready chicken. You make him proud of me, Rob. I will, Jamesy. Huh? I will, I will, I will. All the best. You're all right, you're all right. Aye. I've had a word with my superior, Mrs Nesbitt, and there's good news. If your husband were to agree that the assault was accidental... Assault? You stabbed me with a bread knife. What would you call it? Ricky Matai. That the assault was accidental. We could drop any possible criminal charge. 
Well? All right. I'll do it in one condition, that she gets anger management therapy. <laughs> anger management? That's right. Shout at the officer. Let her know how much you don't need that murderous rage of yours calm down. You bastard. What about your drinking? Oh, would you hear that abuse? I mean, if you had to listen to that every day, would you not take a wee snifter yourself, officer? Does your wife have a history of violence against you, Mr Nisbet? Oh, you don't know the other. <laughs> then it's the time I've had to pamp on the Ray-Bans before I go and do the Saturday shop, because big Serena Williams there has given me a backhander. Is this true, Mrs Nisbet? He's a lying torag. Oh, you're pure lapping this up, aren't you? See, that's all the badness coming out now. We'll be taking a calculated risk, Mrs Nesbitt. We need to have your word you won't raise your hands to your husband again. All right. I'll go to anger management. Oh, thank God, thank God. I've waited for years to hear these words. <laughs> Bloody delays, eh? What's the matter with you? you have got a merry quirk to make the time go even slower. Funnily enough, I've been thinking about it. If this regrafting doesn't take, I'm going to devote my life to others. I'm going to go to Afghanistan and entertain the troops. <laughs> what do you think? Are you familiar with the term friendly fire? <laughs> what about you? What will you do if yours doesn't take? I thought about it a lot. I'm going to go the whole hog and become a female hooker. Ooh. I've spent the last 62 years with a dick between my legs. It's too late to stop now. <laughs> ah, Mr Cotter, Mr Malish. Sorry to have kept you. <laughs> it's been a bloody madhouse in that surgery today. Anyway, we're ready for you now. I think. Fingers crossed. <laughs> right. Oh, no. <laughs> One thing about this job, it's really, really boring. You learn how to sleep with your eyes open, but not today. This case, it's a real belter. Mr Nesbitt, I believe that you and your wife have something to say to the court in conclusion. Yes, Your Honour. I, I am here to vouch for the good character of Ella Cotter. Hi, and I am here to vouch for the bad character of James Cotter. <laughs> I, I have known Ella for more than 40 years. You could never have met a more cheerful, loyal, sunny, bright, trusting person. Then she married Jamesy. Within a year, she'd applied for a gun licence. <laughs> and I have known James Erwin Cotter for 40 years. As his closest friend, I can honestly say, that no more odious specimen of humanity has it ever left a trail of slime behind it as it crawled along the gutter. When he was born, he took a swallow dive into the U-bend of life and never resurfaced. In the septic tank of his reeking mind, he is the lizard king of defecation. The turds, turd. I'm taking a bullet for you here today, you know that, don't you? I know that, Jamesy. I know that. Together, we plead for clemency. Aye, give us clemency, you shower of fat-ass middle-class <laughs> Let's face it. We're all a bit on the nutty side, and being married makes us even nuttier. Which is why, and you might think me crack for doing this, but I'm going to give Mrs Cotter another chance. Mary? Right. Now let's all go home, pull on our gimp suit, and enjoy life. <laughs> Case dismissed. I'm not going to jail. Oh, thank God. Oh, Emma, I'm not pleased for you. Hey, hello. Hello, Scotland, eh? Fairest legal system in the world. Justice for the Bampot, by the Bampot. <laughs> Who's that? I mean, she's had the wing. Got your eyes, Jamesy. So do his eyes. What's his wally like? <laughs> Did you have a hard time at the birth, Hen? Caesarean section. Now I know how John Hurt felt an alien. 
no matter, sweetheart, it was worth it. Because that means it'll still be a nice snug fit down there for Daddy. Stop it. She might cut it off. You're forgetting something, Jamesy. You're married. Aye. But in name only. And my marriage is nothing but a hideous mockery. A hollow sham based on a deep and abiding love for my wife, which just seems to grow stronger. Ella! I, I never saw you there. Irene and Henry, I take it. That's us. Eh. Uh, he's a beautiful baby, isn't he, Ella? Aye. He is. Yeah, Irene, do you think maybe he's Ella could have a wee hoardy the baby, eh? Um, aye, right. Sure. You wouldn't mind? Of course not. Oh, oh. You go ahead, sweetheart. <laughs> Look, the windy's hiding any sharp objects. <laughs> know what I'm thinking, don't you, Jamesy? Huh? This should have been me and you. If only, Ella. If only. But we weren't as lucky as Rab and Mary. No, no, right enough. Uh, he wasn't as lucky as us. <laughs> if we knew that him and Wange was going to turn out unhappily, would we go ahead and date just the same? Mind you, how can we answer that? That? What? Look, ah, oh, put that bloody thing away. Sorry, Rab. Oh, it's just lovely to have Cocky back to his old self again. <laughs> Ella even gave me a BJ last night, out of guilt. She said it was much bigger than she remembered. Almost like it was a different one. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was a different one, eh? <laughs> what do you mean by that? Well, it's just a thought, but... They were mad busy up that hospital that day, you remember? Where have they got you and that other guy mixed up, you know? Stop! Don't go there! Hey, you! <laughs> you! It has been a mistake! Let me see yours! <laughs> Cops, eh? Can't live with them, can't live without them! Come here! Come here! Come here. Come here. Come here. Come here. 